Some years ago, I had the opportunity to ask a rabbi, one of the UK's senior Jewish leaders, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, uh, the chief rabbi, an Orthodox Jew, about the concept of God's anger that occurs uh, often in the Bible. I'll never forget his answer. It's perhaps better and far more accurate, he said, to understand God's anger as his anguish, a dimension of his love, but never an emotion in opposition to it. I remember explaining this story, the story of Dr. Sachs's amazing insight to another rabbi friend of mine. He smiled at me with one of those knowing uh, but kind smiles and then he said, well, if you're going to take the Hebrew Bible and build it into your Christian understanding of life, it probably makes sense to ask a Hebrew what the words you're reading might actually mean. But of course, even for those who read no Hebrew and wonder whether Dr. Sachs's view is accurate and can be trusted, Still, none of this should come as any surprise because the most profound theological truth expressed in the whole Bible is in the first letter of John, chapter 4, verse 8, where it says, God is love. Love is, isn't a characteristic of which God approves, nor is it even a quality that God possesses. Rather, love is God's essential being, the divine essence itself. And more than that, the Bible never makes assertions about God's anger, power or judgment independently of his love. God's anger, as we call it, is nothing more than an aspect of his love. And to understand it in any way different to that is to misunderstand it. Now, of course, my critics will respond that surely if God is love, he must also experience anger at injustice. But this is to miss the point. As that great theologian Karl Barth once explained, if God exhibits characteristics of anger, judgment and the like, they're never more than simply repetitions and amplifications of the one statement that God loves. If we forget this, if we ever talk about God's anger outside the context of God's love, he said, we make a great mistake. If God is love, then every action and reaction dealing with humanity flows out of that love. This is why I'm convinced that scholars make a tremendous mistake whenever they juxtapose God's love with God's wrath. But to speak of God's love in the same breath as his anguish, his anguish as an expression of his love, makes all the sense in the world. Whereas the expressions wrath and anger both carry overtones of vindictive and malicious behaviour, God is always redemptive. Jesus taught his followers to pray, Our Father who is in heaven. Jesus encouraged us to think of God as a parent rather than a judge. Any of us who've known the joy of raising children, have also known the struggle of coping with and responding to their moods and rebellions. Yet no well-adjusted parent who truly loves their child ever seeks retribution for bad behaviour and wrongs done to them. Parental anger, or perhaps much better termed parental anguish, when it's motivated by genuine love, is never violent or destructive. Love drives parents to serve their children devotedly and unselfishly, to look over and to forgive shortcomings, often without any apology, let alone thanks. Now imagine why Paul may have written these words from Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. And I'm convinced, he says, that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. It's only in the light of understanding God, as Jesus taught us to, as the perfect parent, that we begin to see that the divine response to our rebellion is always more accurately described as anguish than anger or wrath. That God, in his compassionate love for us, aches for us, but will not give us up. When love endures the pain of rejection, it hurts. But how do we know that this is the correct reading of a New Testament mindset and understanding of God? Because as 
1 John exclaims God is love before going on to explain there is no fear in love. Perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. I put it to you that in my view, the attempt to explain that God is love but there is also wrath or fury is wrong-headed and dualistic. God's love and what we've come to misguidedly refer to as God's wrath or anger are part of the same whole which consists completely of love. God the Father is not wrathful and furious, indignant and vengeful. God is instead anguished, broken-hearted and wrung with pain by our rebellion and our rejection. But as King David grasps in his lyrics which make up Psalm 145 verse 17, the Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. So to finish with a question, if God is love and Jesus' favourite description of him was as a father, do you think that Rabbi Jonathan Sachs' definition of God's response to our self-centeredness and rebellion as anguish rather than wrath makes sense or ducks the issue?